Happy are those who take refuge in him. God, right now, in this moment, I realize that you are with me. I know the truth about myself. I am your child. Any thoughts or feelings of unworthiness are washed away in your presence. I love you, God. Although I may wonder how I could possibly be worthy of your love, I embrace it with such gratitude that I discover how to love myself. I understand that what I love about me is the pure, compassionate essence of life and love that you are within my soul. God, I live my life in celebration of your presence within me and all around me. I feel worthy. Out of this awareness, a new, more confident me arises. I dedicate myself to being more of a blessing in my world. I am worthy of being blessed and of being a blessing. I am a child of God. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, as you know, this month has been back to school month here at Unity. And so we've had the West Boulevard students, um, dollhouses in the Solar Gallery. And the next week we're going to feature um, the Broadway Christian Youth Ensemble. I'm looking forward to that. And this morning we have singer-songwriter Rihanna Owens with us. So she's going. Or they are going to be performing some really wonderful original music for us. So welcome, Rihanna. person that uses this mic is very tall. I am not that I am not that tall. Hello. Okay. A little nervous, a little scared. It's okay. I was told this place is chill, so that's good. Okay, cool. Let's let's get this bad boy started, I guess. I want a castle made of plastic sharks and for you to be my queen And I won't ever lie to you, so please don't lie to me I want to cross the bridge to get to you and I want to be your key I want to take you to the forest where there's a thousand armies in front of me And that's all I ever feel these days, you lie to me mean that's what my friend said you'd do to me, you Lie to me, your loyalty is just a phase, you lie to me. I want to take you on a picnic, but you had to go polish your crown. And I got you bunches of flowers, but now they're lying on the ground. Said we look around the castle, maybe sit by the fire, but now you're sipping wine and whining, kind of think you might be lying to me, I mean, that's all I ever feel these days, you 
Lie to me, your loyalty is just to phase you. Lie to me, me, that's what they say you do to me, you. Lie to me, lie, lie, lie to me. And everything my friends told me was the truth. And I did everything to show you that I loved you. Prince designed up like one, two, three, and I should have known that you were never gonna pick me. I mean, that's all I ever felt those days. You lied to me. I mean, that's what they say you do to me. You lied to me. Your loyalty was just to phase you. Lie to me. Lie to me. Okay, that's it. Wow, thank you. I'm going to have you learn a new song today, so I'm going to let you stay seated, because I know you're going to be vulnerable learning this new song with me today. On October 16th, we're going to have an all-music Sunday, and I'm very excited about it, and this will be sung, and I wanted us to really know it, so I thought I'd bring it to you before that time so we could learn it together. So we'll start with the chorus. Join your voice with mine We will sing in a new world A new way for humankind Join your voice with mine We will sing in a new world A new way for humankind You ready to start singing it? Let's give it a shot. Ready? Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. You're going to have plenty of chances to try it again, yeah? We are all beginners. We drink from the well, new hearts, born of the morning light. And we are the old souls, echoes of the past, sages, heroes who live beside. In this now moment here, in this now moment here. Right here, it's your turn to sing, ready? Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. We are all connected, we're made of one mind, one heart, born of infinity. We exist to heal the harms of the past, because peace begins when we are set free. In this now moment here, in this now moment here, right here, join your voice with mine, we will sing in a new world, 
a new way for humankind. Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. I'm sorry I unplugged my ukulele with my clumsy foot. So I'm sorry, that's why you can't hear it. But we're gonna keep going. See, we can forgive, but we can't forget. There are stories to be heard that haven't been heard yet. And those stories, they could change us. And those stories, they could heal us. They let us know the work is not done yet. Our work is not done yet. Sing with me. Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. Join your voice with mine. We will sing in a new world, a new way for humankind. Cause it starts with kindness. Cause it starts with freedom. Cause it starts with equity. Cause it starts with kindness. Cause it starts with freedom. And it starts with you and me. Cause it starts with kindness and it starts with freedom and it starts with equity. It starts with you and me. Thanks for learning a new song. Thank you. Great song, great song. Good morning. Good. What? Good morning. Good morning. All right. Welcome, everyone. We are so glad you have chosen to be with us this morning. My name is Bill Chapman, and I am serving as your facilitator today. Now, you may have noticed that I am not Mary Kenny. We don't even look alike. And she said that she was really grateful for that. <laughs> Mary's not feeling well today, so we have to put up with me. All right. We are grateful for all of you who to contribute to our service today. Audra, fantastic. Where is she? There she is, okay. The band, all of the people. And we're so lucky to have a new minister, a beautiful singer, independent singer. We are blessed. Let's go. Come on. A little blessing. We would especially like to welcome our newcomers. If you are here for the first time, welcome. Thank you for being here. Please visit our welcome station in the hallway for more information. And out there, you can also feel free to sign up for our uh, weekly newsletter at the same station. Now, we at Unity offer five principles, practical, spiritual teachings that empower abundant and meaningful living. We believe and practice the following five principles. God is absolute good everywhere present. Our essence is of God, and therefore we are inherently good. We create our experience by the activity of our thinking. Prayer and meditation are the highest forms of creative thinking. As we practice these principles, we live the truth we know. Now please join me in affirming our vision, mission, and core values. Our vision is we celebrate a spiritually awakened world. And our mission is we inspire the awakening and practice of divine love in every heart. 
In addition, we celebrate our core values, knowing that we have come here to be spirit-centered and to express the values of love, peace, and connection. And now it's time for our children to gather in the front of the sanctuary for our children's moment led by Angela. Hello, guys. Um, so I'm going to tell you a story today called The Hunter and the Birds. Okay, And then we're going to talk about it and we're going to see what we can get from the story. So there was once a flock of birds, and they were peacefully eating seeds underneath the tall tree. When along came a hunter, and he threw a net over the flock of birds saying, mm -hmm, I'm going to have a good dinner tonight. Suddenly, the flock of birds started to flap their wings, and all as one, they rose high, 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 far above the trees. And then right above a very tall tree with long branches, they all came down, each one to a different branch, and the net got caught on the very top, and the birds were free. Now the hunter looked at this in amazement, and he said, if all birds cooperated like this, I will never get a dinner or a meal again. So what did the birds do that allowed themselves to be free? How did they free themselves? They flew underneath the net. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they work together, right? Do you think that they could have freed themselves if one or two or three of them decided they didn't want to they didn't want to do what everyone else was doing? Mm -mm, that's right. If they hadn't all cooperated, if they hadn't all been a team and joined together, they probably would have been dinner, right? Maybe, yeah. <clears throat> so this is really a story about how, as a group, we have far more power than we do alone. Because as a group, the birds were able to free themselves. And they couldn't have done that by themselves. <clears throat> Do you guys know any important skills you might need to be able to work in a group together? Helping someone when they get hurt? Yeah, that's a good skill for a group. Being patient with other people? Yeah, that's definitely one you're going to need if you're working in a group. <laughs> Yeah, so those are some great things. I was also thinking like being able to listen, which is kind of like having patience is definitely something we need when we're working together. And we need, also need to trust each other because if I trust that you can do your part and you trust that I can do my part, then we're all gonna be able to rise above and free ourselves. Okay, so now we're gonna bless our children. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ you are. Thank you. It is always beautiful to see children. As we begin the search process for our new minister, let's affirm this out loud together. Filled with divine love and wisdom, we know the right and perfect minister for unity of Columbia is on their way. 
We are grateful, and so it is. Thank you, God. Unity is more than a Sunday morning experience. We offer many activities throughout the week to expand our awareness of God and to bring us closer to each other. Please look in your bulletin for more details and additional events happening this week. Now, we will have an announcement with Alicia Adams of our minister search team's efforts. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Bill, I'm turning this down. First off, I want to say thank you um, to our congregation for all the love and support you guys continue to share with us on the team. Um, this team is amazing. Um, we've taken our time um, and feel pretty confident. We are happy to announce that on November 17th, that weekend, so I think the 20th is the Sunday, we actually are bringing a candidate in to meet you guys. So we'll have more information going forward, but we're excited about the prospect of this person um, and just continue to hold us in your prayers um, and moving forward with this process. So thank you. Thank you. Show Me Dharma is having an open house here today at Unity of Columbia. Members are invited to stop by starting at 11 a.m for refreshments, warm socializing, and a chance to learn more about their meditation and mindfulness classes and services. Women and women identifying groups, join us for a nature walk and lunch on Saturday, September 24th. Meet at 1030 at the Roach Park parking lot to walk the Katy Trail, followed by lunch at Merriweather. Awesome place to eat, by the way. Uh, at 1130, contact Leanne Corman if you have any questions. Sign up in the foyer. Living from a place of surrender, the untethered soul in action, a nine-part course by Michael Singer will be available for viewing and discussion in the Unity House living room between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. on Tuesdays starting September 27th. Now the spirit group evening chapel with Bill and Steve will be offering a new weekly series of lectures on consciousness raising. Starting at uh, nine, eight, it says nine in your thing, but it is eight o'clock, 8 p.m. on Thursday, September 29th via Zoom. Now, you can contact me by phone, uh, printed in your bulletin, the number is, inserted in, in the e newsletter for more information and to obtain an email with Zoom link. This, we have a unique combination, Steve and I. I blab, and he criticizes. <laughs> so, and together, it finally comes together, so... Mark your calendars now, because Unity Arts and Crafts Fair will be held on Saturday, December 3rd, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Everyone is encouraged to donate items. If artists, crafters are interested in making money, they will need to work their table the day of the fair. 20% of all sales will be donated to Unity of Columbia. Please see the sign-up sheet in the foyer and let us know what you will be donating. Also, sign up to help on the day of the fair. Please contact Ellie Tipton at 573-253-4874 for more information. You will be tested on memorizing that number. We invite you to remain for the service, after the service to visit with our guest speaker, Reverend Mary Wood. She will be offering her book for sale in the foyer, Beyond the Fear of Stuttering, My Journey from Self-Acceptance to Freedom. And finally, we have 
an announcement from the board nominating committee. Now, Mary Kenny was to do that because she's on that committee, but she sent me the information via carrier pigeon. And so she says, serving on the board is a God opportunity for you to further your own spiritual growth and to help others with theirs. Listen to spirit and see if it's not calling you. She is a member of the board nominating ministry season and ministry team. And this year we have four openings. Uh, the team, the term begins on January 1st. You must have been a voting member for at least six months to serve on the board. The deadline for application submission is October 6, 2022. There will be a link to more information and the application form in the newsletter. There are also paper links or paper forms in the foyer. Members will vote at the annual meeting, uh, membership meeting on September, Sunday, September, November 13th, 2022, immediately following the Sunday service. Okay. I told you there was a lot of things at Unity. Today's word is thoughtful. My kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing is our affirmation. Today I bring the love and peace of God to all my encounters by being thoughtful. More than politeness and deeper than kindness. Thoughtfulness means I consider the comfort and happiness of others equal to my own. My intention is to let those in my life know what they mean to me. I may reach out to someone who needs an encouraging word, letting them know they have what it takes to be success. I may surprise someone with a kind act, anticipating a need and taking care of something for them before they even have to ask. Each thoughtful word and act lets those in my life know how important they are to me and how worthy they are of my time and attention. The related scripture reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Now, let's join together in speaking the affirmation aloud. Together, my kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing. And now, repeat it to yourself silently. And once again, considerably shorter than everyone else. Oh, you're not so small. So teeny, teeny tiny little baby. Okay, cool. Uh, this one's called uh, Medusa. It's about uh, it's a it's about having like ADHD paralysis and wanting to do something very badly, but your brain's like, heck nah, you can't do that. Hello. Oh, open my nose. Okay, I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to hear my my breathing. That's <laughs> okay, yeah, but yeah, so that's cool. Ah, okay. Whew. Okay. When I wake up, my night lights out. Weighted blankets, not the only thing that's keeping me down. I should get more. I should clean my room And I got so much to do But I can't move I got Medusa in my brain She's making me go insane I want to get up 
I wanna move today. I got Medusa in my brain. She's making me go insane. Changing my brain to fog. Dirty my bones to stone. Now I can't move, and I can't think. I am just a statue, and my body's not in sync. But I got my cats, and I got my hobbies. The emotional support, helping my brain make sense. I can play guitar, and I like to make art. So I guess I have a chance. So far, I got Medusa in my brain. She's making me go insane. I wanna get up. I wanna move today. I got Medusa in my brain. She's making me go insane. Changing my brain to fog. Turning my bones to stone. Now I can't move. And I can't think, 'cause I am just a statue, and my body's not in sync. I got my Medusa in my brain, she's making me go insane. I wanna get up, and I wanna move today. I got my Medusa in my brain, making me go insane. She's here. Changing everything. Okay, that's it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hmm. Thank you very much. I'll just put my bottle there. Whoa! Well, good morning. Oh, it sure filled up good. Let me tell you. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for inviting me here today and asking me to share a few words. My talk title today is "From Fear to Love." And first of all, a little bit about why this subject is such a、um, very important one for me. <clears throat> in January 1989, I went to a conference in Toronto, Ontario, entitled "Born Rich." I was a single parent at the time, and I thought it was all about money, honey. However, it was so much more than that. And I can still remember sitting in the audience when I heard these words: "My mind controls my body; what I think about, I bring about." Sounds a little bit like unity, doesn't it? I had never heard those words in these contexts before, but for some reason, those words, among all the other thousands of words that were spoken that day, stayed in my mind. You say I. <clears throat> you see, I had stuttered for about 50 years. My father stuttered. I thought it was hereditary. We never talked about stuttering in the household. But I would watch my mom making phone calls for my dad, speaking up when other people spoke to him in a group. And I didn't go to university because stand up in front of people and make presentations—you have to be kidding. Can you imagine that now? Anyway, <laughs> I was laughing, and I was a covert stutter. I hid it because I was so ashamed of it. These are just two of the ways that I allowed stuttering to run my life. And on the way home from that conference in 1989, I just heard these words: "You don't have to stutter anymore."、Hmm. I did. I had no idea how that would happen. I just knew it to be true. And then in 1994, after I was part of a Toastmaster、uh, group, I found my way to Unity in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> And I heard the words of Myrtle Fillmore, our co-founder, as a perfect child of God. I do not inherit sickness. 
So I started to wonder if stuttering was hereditary after all. Then I read Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Has anybody read that? Ooh, that's good. And in it, he lists the six main fears, and the first two fears are the fear of poverty and the fear of rejection. I didn't have to go any farther past the fear of rejection to know that, to know that this was the main fear in my life. Because you see, fear keeps us focused on the past and worried about the future. And the fear of rejection is one of our deepest human fears. Why? Because we're biologically wired with this longing to belong. We fear being seen in a critical way by anybody almost. And sometimes we fear being alone. We dread change. <laughs> We're sure having lots of that experience these days, aren't we? So it was important for me not to read and understand this from a place of fear, but from a new place of awareness. I could never put into words before what my fear felt like, how I really felt. So here are a couple of definitions of fear that kind of opened my eyes. Number one, fear, F-E-A-R, a fantasized experience that appears real. A fantasized experience that appears real. Because you see, where is it? It's in our imagination, isn't it? Fear is a state of mind. And fear is a negative thought that we have about who we are, maybe a situation where we're not comfortable, where our self-esteem is kind of not where it could be. So when I read this definition of fear, this thing that was present in my life every day, it didn't seem so formidable anymore. It didn't seem so hopeless anymore. You and I might have our own definition of fear. But I knew that fear wasn't my friend. And I also, at the same time, was learning that it was my learning lesson. Huh. I drive to Unity Village from Burlington, Ontario, three days on the road. I hadn't done this for three years before I came down this year, and I was starting to be scared. Can I do it? Can I do it? I'm three years older than I was before. Huh. And I think fear shows up in almost everybody's life. So I would be, I would invite you to be aware of where this is happening in your life. Are there certain situations? Are there certain people? Are there certain authority figures? Is there a common thread that is running through this fear? Many times we suppress, we squish those feelings of fear down. Why? Because we think if we express them, when we're not going to be accepted for who we are. But you know what? They show up as the same story over and over and over again. So I would invite you to be aware of those stories that you are telling yourself, that you are telling others, and see if those stories are fear-related. And do this not from a place of bad Mary, but from a place of love and acceptance. My same old stories pop up now and then, and they still do. <laughs> oh, dear. Like when I'm in traffic and I'm in a hurry to get somewhere else. Anybody else do that thing in traffic? Oh, a couple of hands went up. Why? Because I think the car in front of me is, should be going faster than it should be going. That's anger. And under the anger, there is what? There is fear. <laughs> I'm grateful that my license plate doesn't read Rev. Mary. <laughs> 
as I might give them not quite a ministerial signal as I pass them by. <laughs> oh, you got to laugh at this whole life. And then there are times when we think we know when we feel that someone knows more about who we are than we do. And when we feel rejected, who is really rejecting us? You and I. Because it's only possible for me to feel that, for me to feel that someone's rejecting me when I don't remember who I am. When I don't remember that I have been born a whole and perfect child of God, then that's when it's possible for me to feel rejected. When I'm not connected to my wholeness, who is rejecting me? I am rejecting me. I thought, you know, darn it, then that means that I can't blame anybody else for how I feel. You make me feel, no, 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 as my grandson says to me, no, no, Nana. Hmm. Why? Because we really don't have any idea what they think about us. It's our perception of who we think we are. What someone thinks about you and I has nothing to do with who you are. But what you think about you does. It has everything to do with who you think you are. It's important to see the relationship between the thoughts of fear and how they show up in our lives as experiences, appearing as if someone or something is against us. So here are some ideas to get us beyond the fear of rejection, but not only that, just beyond fear. Number one, like we said this morning, know that we are created in the image and the likeness of God. And being that person, we always have the courage to face our fears. Number two, listen to these feelings of fear. Why? Because very often they bring us the answers. Number three, be open for the lesson that comes with everything. And sometimes I feel I don't want any more lessons. Does anybody else feel that? And started to start to notice when you speak these words out loud or to yourself. You make me feel. And when we can realize that we're saying those words, then this is the beginning of taking responsibility for how we feel. Sing Daniel Neymar's song. I love myself the way I am. There is nothing I need to change. They used to switch the mic off on me at church when I sing, so I won't sing anymore. <clears throat> I was also surprised to learn that stuttering could become my comfort zone. Why? Because I used it as an excuse not to do things. I used it as an excuse, as I said, not to attend university not to stand and speak what was on my mind, not to meet new people. Oh my gosh, you have to be kidding about that one. So is there a negative in your life that also has become your comfort zone? Because giving this up can feel like giving up a bad relationship. We know that... We know what the relationship is like, even if we don't like it. And we stay there. Why? Because it's comfortable, because it's what we know. In some ways, it feels safe. The fear of the unknown, what might be expected of us, is greater than the bad relationship that we are having. Here's a story about facing a fear. <clears throat> When I was much younger, <laughs> a lot younger, 
I was skiing on a hill that I had never skied before up in northern Ontario. I was standing at the top and I was looking down and oh my gosh, there was moguls. You know what moguls are? Those moguls are all over the place, all the way down. I thought, how am I ever going to do that? So I was just standing there, letting the sun shine. It was a nice day of my poles in the snow. And a friend skied up beside me. And he says, what, what's going on, Mayor? Oh, I can't do that. I'm going to have to either walk down or do something. And he said, I have a suggestion for me. He said, repeat this all the way down. Over and over again. Moguls are my friends. Moguls are my friends. Looked at him like, oh. Anyway, I started, he stood there and repeated it. And then he started to ski down with me, behind me. And I'm saying, moguls are my friends. Mog and guess what? By the time I got to the bottom of the hill, I had actually been enjoying the ride. I also got another insight. And that was, what about if I say stuttering is my friend? And all of a sudden, what a difference those words made. There were many new beginnings for me as I was starting to understand what a large part this fear was playing in my life. And as I released the fear, then the love that is always there began to show up one moment, one day at a time. I began to listen to hear instead of up to here. Because love is not something that we have to search for. It is here all the time, just waiting for you and I to say yes to what it is offering. Revealing Word, our metaphysical dictionary, says that love is an inner quality that sees good everywhere and in everybody. It insists that all is good. And by refusing to see anything but good, it causes love finally to appear, to appear uppermost in itself and in all things. We stay in the vibration of love. How? By loving. <laughs> the more love we give, the more love we attract. And here are words from a song by a friend who I met through my work in the prison system. I've been working in the prison system for about 25 years. And he wrote these words. Loving is what we're born to do. Learning to love everyone, no matter who. While laughing at our humanity and linking with each other to create harmony. We create the possibility of living in peace and unity by learning to love no matter who and loving what we're born to do. And I found this story, I love stories. Here's a story about Joseph Charles in San Francisco. Every day he stood at the curb in front of his house wearing white gloves and waving at the cars going by with a big smile on his face. And guess what? People drove miles out of their way every morning just to get a wave and a smile from Charles. He did this for over 26 years, sharing his smiles and his love with everyone. He died when he was 91 years old in 2002. When we open our hearts and our minds, we never know what, <clears throat> excuse, what's going to show up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ministry was the last thing on my mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. Me, a minister? Oh, my gosh. I was attending Unity Church in Hamilton, Ontario, when the minister and I went out for dinner one night. And because of the Unity courses that I had taken, she was suggesting again that ministry might be in my future. I was 65 years old, and I kept saying, I'm too old for that, too old. Then that night she asked me what I was going to do with the rest of my life, and I was like, oh, she got me. 
That was a question that I needed to hear. I was just thinking, you should have heard the comments my ex-husband made when I told him that I was going into the ministry. I don't know why I'm sharing that. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> uh, I, I was ordained when I was 68 years old. And I want you to know deep in your hearts that you're never too old. And as long as you get this message in here that it's yours to do. I just retired at the end of last year and I'm 85 years old. So, hey. And everybody, age is all up here. I won't, that's another lesson. I believe that the journey from fear to love is a required trip. And I believe that this trip brings lessons with it. Lessons that continue to encourage you and I to say yes to the love that is always here. To love the love that we always are. Love is my decision. And I would invite you to make it yours. I've, I've, I've written a book, Beyond the Fear of Stuttering, My Journey to Self-Acceptance and Freedom. There are chapters on our thoughts, our feelings, our self-image, our gratitude. It's all unity information because this is what has allowed me to accept who I am. Awesome. So I thank you, God, for this lesson that has changed my life because, you know what, this lesson never was about stuttering. And I would invite you to look and see what's going on in your life and see if it's really what you think it's really about. This lesson for me was what was beneath the stuttering, what was behind the stuttering. And notice I never call it my stuttering anymore. I don't own it anymore. It's the stuttering. I would invite you to be aware of what you are calling my in your life. There will also be copies of my book for sale. It's available on Amazon, whatever. And I thank you for allowing me to share my journey with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds with a song for meditation. Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. Let go of the shore. Float into the mystery. Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. Let go of the shore. Float into the mystery. And so now I invite you to close your eyes if this feels comfortable for you. If you want, put your hands on your heart. And just know that there is truly only one presence and one power. This power is God. This power is love. This power is peace and joy. And know that in every moment of every day, this is who you and I truly are. We are not what the outside world tells us we are. And even though there may be situations happening in the outside world, as we know there are today, 
Let us be aware that we can go inside at any moment of every day and feel the love of God. Feel this presence of God, this healing, loving presence of God. And so when things on the outside come to challenge us, let us know that they are lessons, truly. Let us say thank you for the lessons. We say thank you for what it brings to us. We say thank you for who it brings to us. And so as we spend our days, these days, let us look at the outside world, not through the eyes of fear, not through the eyes of impatience, not through the eyes of blaming someone else, or how we feel, but let us turn within and know that we are here to love ourselves and then in turn, we are here to share that love. And so let us spend a few moments in the silence, aware of who you and I truly are, aware of this presence of God in the silence. And so we say thank you for this time together. We say thank you for each and every one of you. And we pray this in the name and through the power of the living, loving Christ presence. And so it is. Amen. Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. Let go of the shore, float into the mystery. Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. Let go of the shore. Float into the mystery. Thank you, Reverend Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As always, we return from our meditation and a powerful, beautiful message filled with gratitude and peace. And in that consciousness, we turn now to the spiritual practice of generosity. With this practice, we choose to dedicate a consistent portion of our time, treasure, and talent to our spiritual work and to the work of our spiritual community. For those of you watching online, you can use the donate button on your website to make your gift. We remind ourselves that any gift given from the heart has the power to transform lives. This week, our gifts help support the mission of Unity South Central Region in addition to Unity of Columbia. And now please hold your gift in your heart as we speak our offering blessing together. Divine love, one with me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I am, and all that I give. 
I am joy-filled and grateful. Thank you so much to Dr. Wood, or to Reverend Wood and also to Rihanna this morning for being here. We're so grateful for having you. Thank you. Everyone here is so tall. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is my last song. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, for having me here. It's very nice, very, very chill environment. I I appreciate that a lot as a teenager. <laughs> okay, let's get it going. <laughs> okay. Whew. Birds can walk on the water and the fish are climbing the trees. I'm lying on the ground and the raccoons are feasting on me. <laughs> oh golly gee, the neighbors are finally getting mad at me because I took all of their kitchen supplies and I made a robot to take over the city. Fever dream, just another one of those days, fever dream. Guess I'm finally melting away in fever dream. Oh, fever dream, fever dream has come to take me. Skeleton inside of me is finally asking for help. Lost its funny bone and now it wants to get out. Sitting in my hammock, just looking up at the clouds. And the pond water is telling me if I take a sip, then I'll get knocked out. So I took a sip, and it was really tasty. Fever dream. Just another one of those days. Fever dream. Guess I'm finally melting away. Fever dream. Oh, fever dream, fever dream has come to take me. I'm in the forest, I'm in the forest, and the trees are singing again. You're being mean, but I love you because you're my only friend. The princess by the pool is waiting for her dove to send. She doesn't use pigeons. And you're crying in front of the squirrels because of your embarrassment. Take me away to the land so far away only I could reach it. So far that time flies by in a second. And you could tame the fever and get me out or leave me be. And I could sleep for eternity. Fever dream. Just another one of those days in fever dream. Guess I'm finally melting away in fever dream. Oh, fever dream, fever dream has taken me away. Has taken me away. It 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 took me away. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I got. I have to unplug my ukulele. Is that going to be loud? Is that going to be loud? I need to do that. Rihanna, thank you. It was really beautiful. Yeah. All right, we have 
This didn't get into the, so I'm winging this. It did not get into the script. But we have two forms of blessing. One is the money. And we bless it because it's used for good and perfect purposes. Secondly is the prayer box, where it is always available to have the prayers you need put into the universe. Thank you. Okay. Now, let's take the time to hold one another in grace and light and share the names of those loved ones you would like to hold in prayer. Please speak your loved one's name aloud so we can collectively hold space for that person. Of course, Mary. Oh. For all, now let's take time, look, for all the names on our heart and know that we are heard and seen in our collective God mind. Now please rise and sing with us our prayer of protection. God is. Tchau.